and I would like to revoke my human status and change to another species after I read that. Hi guys, it's Izzy and in today's video we're going to be doing my November wrap up. As last month in October I read 20 books, I also read 20 books this month which is kind of weird that I read the exact same amount of books but clearly it's a good number. I'm wearing a snowman jumper because uh, it's like the 30th of November and I need to get some wear out of the way too many Christmas items I own so you will pretty much be seeing me exclusively in Christmas wear for the rest of December so enjoy that and yes enjoy my Harry Styles album that I've got here. Um, but yes, I've read 20 books in November and let's get started on them. As I always say, I'm going to try and be quick, but I think it's physically impossible for me to be quick because I can't shut up. My family and friends hate me because I never stop talking. You know, you subscribe, so it's on you. <laughs> And it's a special treat today because the sun is actually out. Wow, we are really living our best lives today. Like, the sun in November in England? We have been blessed. Okay, so the first book I read was kind of a disappointment and that was We Contain Multitudes by, who is it by? Sarah Henstra. Now, this book started off strong. Like, the, the first 50%, the gays were winning. It was impeccable. I was obsessed with it. Like it was such a good book, such a good romance, such oh, just everything was great. The characters were great. The story was good. I was just like in love. The writing was good. Then we got to like the 50% mark. I've just realised I've not explained what this is about. I'll explain after I've told you about my thoughts. Then we got to like the 50% mark and there were some choices made that I was not a fan of. This could have been a five star favourite of the year, but it ended up being a three star because it just made some choices. I don't think the end was handled that well. It wasn't handled how I would have liked it to be. It just, um, it just really lost some points. Uh, but yeah it was just such a disappointment because I literally thought it was going to be like mm, one of my favourite books but it's described as Aristotle and Dante discover the secrets of the universe along with I give you the sun first 50% I was like yes we have finally found an Aristotle like book because that's what I wanted for since I read it but then not so much, mm, not so much. Mm, Benjamin O'Leary Sands is uh, clearly superior, so. Basically, it's kind of told through letter form. These two boys start writing letters to each other because basically in their class, the teacher decides that you should write letters to the person that sits in your seat in a different class. Like, it's like a pen pal but just the person who sits in your seat in class in a different class which it was real cute the letters were real cute it was it was such a good romance but yeah basically that was like how they met um what are their names jonathan and adam i feel like they didn't call each other those names but yeah basically they write letters they become friends they become more than friends but kind of the antagonistic points of the book are like homophobia and bullying and parental like abuse kind of, it's just just poor family situations very difficult family situations so if you are triggered by any of those topics I would stay clear from this book and again I wasn't really prepared for how dark it was gonna get because it got dark and yeah it just 
there was like some cheating elements in it that I was not a fan of. I don't think that the characters were ready for the end. I think they needed to work on themselves and yeah just overall there were just choices made that weren't really what I would like portrayed in young adult books. Like yeah uh, it was just so annoying because it could have been so good and it could have been a really impactful book but I still gave it a three star because I enjoyed the first half so much so the next book I read was Between Shades of Grey by Ruta Sepetis I read last month Salt to the Sea by Ruta Sepetis um and I wanted to cry forever so I thought why not torture myself some more so I did and um that's basically all I have to say on it. Uh, I have no words. I gave it like four 4.5 stars. I struggled to give her books five stars because they're so darn depressing that it's like did I enjoy this or do I just hate humanity? Who knows? But basically this follows our main character Lena. She is a teenager like 16 I think in 1941 in Lithuania basically as Stalin Hitler started to take over places like Lithuania and Poland they were all taken from their homes especially people who were involved in any kind of like education or propaganda against these people and so basically we follow Lena her brother and her mother as they are separated from her father who they don't know where he is and they are put on this train car with like so many other people like there's not like there's just like people dying in this train car and like they have to like wee out of the window and it's like disgusting and they have nothing to eat and it's just all awful and they're on the way to Siberia to work in labour camps and it is extremely harrowing. There is a slightly hopeful ending but the amount of suffering that happens before that is just horrific and I would like to revoke my human status and change to another species after I read that. That's that's how I felt but there's a lot of trigger warnings so if you are triggered by death in general, death of parents, um, sexual assault, just depressing torture and and sadness and illness just go into this one carefully. <laughs> it was incredibly written, it was absolutely a masterpiece but it was absolutely depressing so you know. <laughs> the next book I read was a one star and that was Will Grayson Will Grayson by John Green. I love Turtles All the Way Down by John Green, it's a very special book to me, it's a book that really kind of gives words to how my anxiety kind of presents itself, how my panic attacks present themselves. It kind of really helped me to kind of explain things a bit more and I do quite like The Fall in Our Stars. It's not my favourite book but I liked it when I read it and I think it's a relatively good book and so I was like I wonder if I like any of his other books. That was a mistake. What is Will Grayson what Grayson about? Basically it's about two Will Graysons, they both have the same name and we follow them separately. Nothing happens in this, I mean I'll just read you what I wrote on Goodreads. We love two annoying and entitled Will Graysons and a book running rampant with homophobia, fatphobia, sexism with a lovely dusting of racism and in case you got amnesia from the last sentence, Tiny Cooper is fat and gay. Basically one of the Will Graysons has a best friend called Tiny Cooper who is a very large fat black man who is also gay. This is mentioned every sentence. Tiny Cooper cannot be referenced without referencing the fact that he's extremely gay and extremely fat and I hated it so much. I hated it so much and both Will Graysons were so entitled. They were such jerks. I hated them so much. Like the Will Gray, so like one of the Will Graysons has like depression, but it's not written well at all as depression. It's written as like 
2007 emo MySpace depression that did no, re it, the representation was horrific. The representation just across the board was horrific. So don't read this book. It was terrible. I hated it with my entire being. That's all. The next book I read again was a little bit of a disappointment because it started off strong and then it was just okay and that is The Infinite Noise by what's your name? Lauren Shippen. This is basically about two boys Caleb and Adam. Caleb has basically like special powers where which in this book are called like atypicals if you have these like powers and basically he is an empath so he can like feel everyone's feelings and basically Adam kind of like helps to balance his empath abilities because they are like super stressful and like very noisy as referenced in the title that it just never shuts up so it's like very exhausting thing to have and Adam kind of helps balance that out but Adam also suffers from depression so that kind of is good representation unlike in Will Grayson, Will Grayson and also the fact that Caleb is an empath and can then kind of feel his depression is a really interesting take on it which I really liked and yeah basically they become friends, fall in love, it's a great like jock nerd romance which I'm a sucker for, I love a like popular nerdy romance, it's so good, that was some good stuff and yeah basically it's like a coming of age with a splash of like sci-fi it was okay it was an enjoyable read but it was just nothing really special then i read cool down the hawk by maggie steve butter have i been the same since no will i ever be the same unlikely this book rocked my world my brain could not process it was it was incredible. This follows on after the Raven Cycle, so you need to read that series first if you haven't, but if you have and you haven't read this book, um, what are you doing with your life? Read it. This follows one character from the Raven Cycle, Ronan, and Ronan is a dreamer, so that means that when he dreams, he can bring back objects from his dreams. And in this book, we follow another dreamer called Hennessy, and she is having problems with her dreams because she can only bring back copies of herself. She can't bring back anything else except copies of herself, which is basically killing her. So we eventually find out why and kind of these characters come together. And then there's also this like art fraud world oh and kind of the world of trading of dream objects and it's just so expansive and it was so like high stakes and high tension. The ending of the book was just like incredible and if you've read and loved this book please DM me so that we can scream about it together because I need to talk to someone about this desperately so um please do that because I'm gonna cry otherwise and also look at this beautiful cover and the fact that I have to wait like a year to read the second book is criminal I'm suing for emotional damage so that's that uh, it was incredible my only thing was that in the raven cycle that we follow like a group of like five characters and i love those characters so much and i love their friendship so much that i did kind of miss that in this book so like if i hadn't read the raven cycle and just read that it would have been even better but because i'd read the raven cycle and knew how much i loved the gang or the gang c and that made me sad that they weren't in it but apart from that it was incredible five stars I loved it so much. I was very nervous going into it that I was going to be disappointed, but Maggie Steve Utter came through as she always does. It was impeccable. I then read As I Descended by Robin Talley. This is a retelling of, oh, what is some Shakespeare play? Tell me, sir, what is this a retelling of? 
it's a tell it's a retelling of Macbeth this book I don't really know anything about Shakespeare I didn't really study him in school so that didn't really mean a lot to me but basically this follows our two main characters Maria and Lily they are a couple and they are kind of like almost top of the school except for this girl Delilah and basically they like summon some spirits with like a Ouija board one night and things go on from there and basically they become willing to do anything to get to the top and basically everyone kind of goes crazy and there's ghosts and it's weird i gave it two stars because i just didn't care that was it's downfall i just didn't care about anything i didn't care about the characters i didn't care about the plot i just didn't care so it wasn't necessarily a bad book and maybe if you like Macbeth you would enjoy this but I just I just didn't care which is kind of sad because one it has a lesbian couple and two it has a disabled character and three it has a lot of like um Latina and people of colour representation so like it does great in that department but the rest of it just was a bit okay ish <laughs> so yeah it just didn't do anything for me i then read the inexplicable logic of my life by benjamin aliri sands this is a book about a boy called why can i not remember anyone's names today okay for some reason goodreads isn't giving me the summary so i don't know what his name is so we're gonna call him main character and this follows him his dad is gay and he basically took main character in adopted when his mum when the main character's mum died the main character and his adoptive father were best friends so he took him in and they have the most wonderful parental um relationship i've read in a book honestly it like warmed me to my soul his dad is just like an angel like i love him so much and this book kind of is a coming of age story that also deals really specifically with grief so if that is a topic that you can't really handle then I probably wouldn't recommend this book because while it's not a super depressing book there are a lot of light moments and there's a lot of love and there's a lot of acceptance and and really beautiful moments it is mainly surrounding grief and kind of main character growing up and what that means as he kind of thinks about his father and his biological mother and his biological father and his friends who need a lot of support from him and also his grandma is ill and dying and he loves his grandma more than anything and yeah it's just a really really beautiful book that talks about a lot of topics really brilliantly and just Benjamin Leary Sands can do no wrong. I gave this book four stars because it didn't impact me enough emotionally for me to give it five stars but it was a really beautiful book that I would highly recommend you reading if that's the kind of book you like. It was just stunning. I then read The Grace Year by Kim Liggett. I gave this book 3.5 stars. This is kind of like The Handmaid's Tale in that it's very sexist and the women are very controlled and this follows our main character. Do I know her name? Absolutely not. Please tell me her name. Oh and apparently it's gonna be a movie. Interesting. Oh yeah her name's Tyranny. I hated that. That's such a dumb name. But basically in this world when girls turn 16, I think, I think it's 16, they are married off so that like basically the main purpose for girls growing up is to get a marriage proposal basically but they're not chosen by the girls they're chosen by the boys and the fathers and basically tyranny thinks that she's not going to get a marriage proposal at all she doesn't want one she wants to just work because basically if you don't have a husband you have to do a lot of laborious laborious work and it's quite a tough living but tyranny just wants to do that she wants to be her own person and not feel you know like 
someone else's property and then when they turn 16 after they've had their marriage proposals they are sent off into the woods to have their magic like taken away from them so for one year they like have to survive in the woods kind of like lord of the flies they think that the magic that these girls have like affects the men and they so they have to like get rid of it so for a year they basically have to just survive in the woods and they're also these like hunters who try and kill these girls because their body parts are really useful kind of creepy um but basically yeah we follow tyranny as she enters her grace year and has to survive in this kind of kill or be killed environment that's very again lord of the flies and yeah she just has to survive and kind of find out along the way how she can fight back and how she can kind of change things for the girls in the future even if she can't change anything for herself and the girls right now she wants to find a way for it to be better for the future and yeah it was a really great feminist book and i did enjoy it like i definitely was interested and it kept me engaged it just again wasn't super special but if that sounds interesting to you it was a well written book and it was engaging so i would recommend reading it it just like wasn't anything that really like stuck with me personally i then read a book that was a real surprise and that's starfish by akemi dawn bowman i gave this book 4.5 stars i absolutely loved it if you like i would say like alice oseman's books especially like radio silence that kind of thing and you just like how the how it's written and how it portrays teenagers and how it portrays really difficult issues then i would really recommend this book i really loved it it was just so good it follows our main character kiko who is an artist and basically she has a very difficult relationship with her mother her mother is kind of not like physically abusive but kind of plays these like mental games and just makes her feel terrible about herself and scared and manipulated and controlled and terrible and she is also half japanese and the mum who is just white american like hates that about her children because she's divorced the japanese man who she had her children with and she hates that her children are half japanese love a bit of racism this is obviously challenged and not presented as right but we follow kiko as she is desperate to get into this art school because she sees that as her only out basically when her uncle moves back in to her family home who she has an abusive past with she like breaks and she just can't take it anymore and she gets a rejection from this art school she wanted to go to and so when her old best friend comes back into town and invites her to come out to los angeles i think doesn't matter but she he invites her to go with him to look at other art schools and to get away from this home because she just can't bear to live there and so we kind of follow her as she struggles with her anxiety her social anxiety her relationship with her mother her relationship with her brothers and her love of art and kind of how dependent she feels on people and it just covers so many topics so brilliantly and it's just such a beautiful book i loved kiko as a character i loved how this story was written i loved the plot of it it was just stunning and i loved it so yeah i 100 percent recommend reading this it's definitely like an underappreciated book because i haven't heard that many people talking about it but it was really a standout book for me and I just had a really great reading experience with it. Then reread Red, White and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. Do I need to talk about this for long? No, because I already read it. But basically everyone knows what this is about. It, this is about Henry and Alex. Alex is the son of the first female president of the United States and Henry is the Prince of Wales and they get into an altercation that is really bad for their publicity so their PR teams scheme a way to get them to hang out together so that it's good for their image and they start to form a begrudging friendship 
and then a budding romance. It's fantastic. One of my favourite books of the year. It will definitely be on my favourite books of 2019 list. And it's just incredible. I love it. Gave it five stars again. I don't need to talk about it. It's just it's just incredible and I also wrote a really long Goodreads review on it about everything that I loved and didn't love but that those were tiny so if you do want to know more of my thoughts I will link that in the description box because there's nothing else left to say. It's incredible if you haven't read it, get on that. <laughs> I then read If We Were Villains by M.L. Rio and I think the problem with this was I went in with way too high expectations because everyone just told me it was so amazing and I was like it sounds amazing and I think because I've waited so long to read it and heard how much everyone loves it that my expectations were just way too high. Basically this follows our main character as he is finishing his 10 year prison sentence and this police chief person who was part of the case 10 years ago and has never got the truth about what happened is giving is finally retiring from the police and says to this man look like I'm out of the police I'm not gonna you know I'm not going to arrest anyone else if it wasn't you like can you just tell me this story and that's what we follow so we follow like seven characters who are at this really prestigious art school where they study Shakespeare and perform Shakespeare and um, the amount of Shakespeare quotes in this were just never ending but basically someone dies one of the group and we don't know what happened that's basically the story and it just kind of gets darker it's like a dark academia novel and yeah i enjoyed it but it was way too long there was just so much that could have been cut out of this and i would have loved it it would have been like a 4.5 star but as it is it was like a 3 3.5 star which was really disappointing for me because i really wanted to love it but there was just so much wasted space in this novel for me. I found a lot of it compelling, but just because it took so long to actually get anywhere, get any information, get just anything, it just really did not keep me engaged. And I just kind of didn't look forward to picking it up because I was just kind of bored, which is like the mark of a not great book. If you don't really want to pick it up for me that means that I wasn't really a massive fan of it I just think it could have been better if it was just a slightly more fast-paced it could have been better I'm sorry to everyone who loves this book I completely understand why people do love this book it just wasn't for me it just didn't really work that well for me unfortunately I then read Do You Dream of Terror 2 by Temi O oh, and this book follows how many are there? Eight teenagers. Basically, these teenagers are trained to go on this astronaut mission to Terra 2, this planet that is inhabitable, and they are going to start a colony there. And so they have to have really young people because the journey takes like 23 years I think it is so they have to be on the spaceship for like 23 years and basically it just kind of it's described as like being similar to a small way to an angry planet and the 100 it's not like the 100 just saying if you're reading it because it's similar to the 100 don't there's it's not and it's kind of similar to a long way to a small angry planet but that book's more gentler and nicer and just nicer. This book kind of is a bit more actiony and a bit more sad and a bit more just sad. <laughs> and I gave it three stars. I enjoyed it. It was really long though. So I think it again could have had a lot of scenes cut out of it. It was just super long. But yeah, it kind of just follows the dynamics of this group of teenagers and how they're gonna manage living in a spaceship for 23 years and then starting a colony. So it was an interesting book, I thought it was like quite philosophical and 
I enjoyed it, but again, not anything special. I then read, why I, I don't know, but I read An Abundance of Catherines by John Green. This is basically about a boy who's dated 19 Catherines. I don't even know one Catherine. Actually, my therapist is called Catherine, but I don't know any Catherines, but he's somehow dated 19 Catherines and he wants to develop a formula for like love and basically if he can predict how a relationship is gonna end. It sucks. I don't even wanna talk about it, it just sucks. I don't think it was as bad as Will Grayson, Will Grayson, but that's a very high bar in terms of terribleness, so, you know. But I gave it one star, I just hated everything about it. I don't, I don't even wanna talk about it, it just sucked. I hated all the characters, they were all so dumb and entitled and annoying, and I hated it and it was boring, and what was the purpose of it? There was no purpose of it. Why was it written? Why? I don't get it, it was just pointless. So I got on great with John Green's books. Luckily again I went for a five star book and that is Girl Made of Stars by Ashley Herring Blake. I've given every Ashley Herring Blake five stars. Four, I've read four of them and I'm obsessed. This was actually controversially not my favourite Ashley Herring Blake book. My favourite book was How to Make a Wish and I think maybe it's just because this book has been so hyped and I've wanted it for so long that like it can never live like fully up to my expectations of it but it was still a five star. It was magnificent and look at this cover like it's stunning but basically this is a book about two twins Mara and Owen and one day Hannah who is Mara's friend and Owen's girlfriend claims that Owen raped her and this obviously tears Mara's world apart because she is a feminist and she loves Hannah and she knows Hannah would never lie and she also has her own past with sexual assault which makes things very difficult to deal with as well and she kind of has to reevaluate her entire life because she is a twin and her twin has committed this awful thing and how do you live having to change your entire view of somebody and how do you manage who to believe and who to support and how to navigate those relationships which is just such a really well discussed idea because there's so many stories in the news about rape and people will say oh but he was such a nice boy like he would never do that and like that's good enough for them to believe that he is innocent when most of the time they're not but that's kind of what it, it, it explores in this book is basically people saying that Owen could never have done that because he is just not that kind of guy and like his parents and it's just all so well done it's just absolutely brilliant uh this is also a female female romance as is every ashley herring blake book and that was just a really great part of the book and yeah it was just it was just stunning there's nothing else to say except it's amazing read it read every ashley herring blake book they're just all incredible she's such a magnificent writer and one of my all-time favorite authors I then read the three books for my reading my childhood favourites video vlog that I did, I'll leave that up in the cards, I would love for you to check it out, I worked really hard on it so I hope you enjoy it, and yeah so I read My Sister Jodie by Jacqueline Wilson, Shadow Magic by John Lenahan, and Journey to the River Sea by Eva Ibbotson, I won't go into any detail about them because I talked about them in length in my other video so just go and watch that to see my thoughts on them. I then read Let Me Hear a Rhyme by Tiffany D. Jackson. This follows, I think it's in the 90s, and it follows three teenagers who two of them are boys and one of them is girl, and two of them were best friends with this girl's brother, and her brother has died, so these three people are grieving the death of this boy, and 
they start to release his music into the world because he was a really talented rapper and lyricist, 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 not sure. And they want his work to be recognised and just appreciated as kind of a way to grieve and move on. And it was a really well done book. I gave it three stars as it didn't again really get me emotionally but I thought it was a, I thought it was a strong book I thought it was good I thought the plot was good but I did also read it over really separate times because I had the audiobook and then the audiobook stopped working for a few weeks and then it started working again so I think because I read it quite disjointedly that maybe I didn't get quite as much out of it as I could I think it could have been a four star for me maybe if I just read it in succession but I didn't so yeah it was a good book don't have much else to say about it <laughs> I then read The Diviners by Libba Bray for The Diviners read along which is reading The Diviners in November, Lair of Dreams in December before The Devil Breaks You in January ready for the fourth and final book in this series King of Crows in February so I will be reading Lair of Dreams in December and before The Devil Breaks You in January and um I don't we don't need to talk about it because I've read it three times in like just over a year and I talk about it every two seconds. It's set in the 1920s, we follow a group of characters with special abilities and basically like the devil. It's great, read it and if you haven't heard me talk about it it's probably because you're new here. It's like my basically my favourite series ever like aside from like Harry Potter and stuff. It's just incredible. Basically watch any other video that I've done and um, it will probably appear in it and I just don't need to talk about it anymore because I love it and we all know that here, we're all friends, we all know my obsession. And then the final book I read was a novella and that was The Gentleman's Guide to Getting Lucky by Mackenzie Lee. This is a novella that follows after the events of The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue, which I have over there, by Mackenzie Lee, and it's just a cute novella that follows Monty and Percy as they navigate their relationship and kind of the more physical side of the relationship and just like discussing and being a healthy couple, which is like we stand a healthy communicative couple and it was just lovely. I gave it five stars. I loved it so much. It was the book we all deserved and it was peak content and like they're one of my favourite couples of all time. So I needed this book and Mackenzie Lee delivered so it was great and it was just as good as I was hoping it was going to be. So those are all the books I've read in November. I'm out of breath from all this talking so I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what your favourite book of November was. My favourites were Cool Down the Hawk, Girl Made of Stars and starfish i think and also the gentleman's guide to getting lucky but yeah let me know what your favorites were of the month and yeah if there's any videos you want me to do in december please let me know because i always want to do videos that people are interested in so if you want to see anything then i would love for you to request some videos for december and Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have an absolutely wonderful rest of the day. You can follow me on Twitter and Goodreads. I'll leave them down below. And I would love if you subscribe to me for more rambling content of me rambling about books I love. I mean, what more could we all want? So yes, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.